Hey guys, welcome back to Vince Bell Customs, and today we are going to repair the cape on this fan art Magneto statue. Now, I don't know who sculpted it, I don't know who produced it, all I know is there's an issue with the cape, and the person who brought it over to me wants me to repair it and everything. Now, uh, I have to do this in the garage because this is a big item, I don't have any room in the studio to kind of like let it sit around, so... With a project like this, it's better for me to have the item in hand and sort of figure out what I need to do. Because if I get sent pictures, I don't know what I need to do. Do I need to put up crazy heavy wires? Do I need to rebuild some of the shoulders? Do I just need to glue the pieces back together? So you never know what happens. So we're going to go over my uh, whole thought process as I build this. Because I want to explain something of like the problem with sculpted capes. Now, I, I don't mind sculpted capes if they're done correctly. Uh, I'm actually more of a fan of cloth capes because I feel with cloth capes um, you don't have to weigh down the whole item of the statue and if the cape is done great in cloth you can bend it and you can make it look cool the way you want it to. Um, but with sculpted capes I think what a lot of people do whether you're a, a licensed company or you're making a fan art statue is too many people design the cape where it goes over the shoulders like this and this is actually a poor design especially for Magneto. Uh, you, I understand you want to change a head, but if this item right here is going to be purple, and this is going to be purple, why not have a huge thick key go into the upper body with this piece is already molded to this? And then you can change the head. By putting this stuff over the shoulder, you, you, ru you run into a lot of issues. One, you have to paint all this here, and you have just this thin area is kind of holding up all this weight. It doesn't really make sense to me. So whether you're a, a fan art person uh, producing a statue or your company, you got to really think of engineering. And I think companies like Sideshow and stuff are starting to do a little bit better with engineering, especially if uh, the item is like one leg holding up the statue floating. They're realizing they have to put a metal rod all the way up the leg and kind of up around there. So the engineering is starting to get better for the long run because, you know, when you buy a statue, uh, and in like three years it starts leaning on you, you're not really designing it correctly. Especially a lot of the older statues who have pegs in the foot, but they don't have pegs going up the ankles. And then, you, you know, you have this little ankle that's holding up this huge statue. That resin, whatever it's polystone, regular resin or ceramic or whatever, is not going to support it long enough. So what happened with this cape is the two keys. So you have this key here, and you have this key here. And what happened on them is it one key broke on them and then the other key broke. And I think they said they tried to glue it back together and I think they tried to do it with the rods that I do. But sadly, it's just not working and we have to fix it. So what I'm going to try to do is figure out how to get this on there correctly where it's going to hold it. Now, personally, if I was going to design it this way, what I would want to do is if I was going to have somebody cast it up, I would have a metal rod that actually sort of comes up this way and bends downward. So imagine this rod is sort of, like when you're ready to cast this up, this rod is actually bent. So you have a rod that kind of comes up and then it comes this way. So it's almost like a 90 degree angle. And then what you do is you put that rod at that 90 degree angle and you cast it up in the resin here. So this way when it sits on the statue, you have a strong key here that's sort of holding up the resin over here. You know, just this little piece of resin, this little piece of resin, if it doesn't line up with your shoulders correctly and you lift that up, you break it. So that's kind of what we're running into here. So I have to kind of figure out, do I just take uh, this key and get like a really thick rod and just kind of put a nice rod in here? Or do I kind of get a thinner rod but kind of bend it into here like so, drummel out some of this resin and put that rod in there and then fill it in and touch it up? So it goes in. So I'm not really sure yet how to go about this. This rod is a little too thick for what I want to try to do. So I have to go over to the hobby store and get some thinner pieces of uh, you know, this brass rod. Because this rod is strong enough, but it also bends easier than steel or the zinc where it'll work. So that's kind of where we're at right now. So I'm kind of just like plotting out what I need to do. So the idea is... Maybe I'm going to put a rod that's bent in this key coming up around here, dremel out some of this, put a rod in there, get that secured. And I think for this one over here, I'm not really sure because we have a little gap over here. And I don't know if that little gap hits this key over here. I'm not really sure yet. So until I get those rods in hand, I'm not going to put this on the statue and kind of play with it because I'll probably break these keys off and I don't want to do that yet. 
So that's kind of where we're at with this, but I really wish that this purple piece right here was actually connected to this cape. It really wouldn't have run into any of these issues, but it is what it is. And I have to kind of plan it out and figure out how, how to fix it. Now, like I always tell people, I go above and beyond because if I'm going to repair it, I'd rather go above and beyond and repair it than you run into an issue again in another few months if you have to pack it up and move it and you snap the key again. So that's where we're at. Now, the other thing too is I don't know if these keys were actually lined up correctly too. And I think they mentioned to me that these keys were sort of not lining up correctly. So when he was putting in, it was cracking. So that's going to cause another issue. So I'm not really sure where we have to go about this. The other thing too is, is if I think that uh, this is not working correctly, I might actually have to break these keys off and actually bend the circle rod going around and then refill in these other areas so the circle rod sort of goes in. I don't know. I'm not really sure yet how to go about this, but we're going to figure it out. Uh, one way or the other, I'm going to make sure that whatever I do, this piece is secured and this person doesn't have to ever worry about this again, whether he has to pack it, move it, sell it, or whatever, it's secured. So we're going to see what we need to do. So I'm going to go to the hobby store maybe in a couple days. I'm going to grab some more rods. We'll come back and hopefully I'll have a better attack plan of what to do on this. Okay, so first step is uh, I figured instead of going out buying some bar, let me try with this steel because this is some steel bar that I've had. So it took a little while, but I actually bent the piece and the piece is going to go in here like this. So what I'm going to try to do is dremel out a hole here. Uh, we have some meat over in here, which should work. And what I'm going to do is try to make it so this piece sort of connects into there. And then what I could do is I can ease over it and I can make sure it doesn't hit the shoulder, cause, which I don't think it does because it kind of like goes behind the shoulder. And I might have to kind of bend it just a little bit more. And that should actually be a good starting point for this one. For that one over there though, it's going to be a little bit trickier. I'm not really sure if I can do it, but I'll have to see how it sits on his shoulders. I might have to kind of sand down some of these keys a bit. It's going to be a little bit of a thing where you got to kind of do a trial and error. I mean, I would love to be able just to put a square rod in there and a square rod in there and then a hollow rods in the shoulders and make it perfectly good. But there, since there's no meat up here, I can't do that. Um, I mean, I could do it where I could bend the rod, but there's still not enough meat within the cape to do it. So that's the problem. So we're going to just try to do little clamps like this for now. All right, so I went ahead and I drilled all this out. So yeah, it's a little bit messy. I went through the keep over here, but we got to do what we got to do to get this repaired. So when I popped this out, this broke off because there really wasn't much glue holding this left. And the person who did repair put a little tiny rod in there, but that was never going to hold this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this back on, but I'm going to mix up some Aves. I'm going to squeeze Aves in here, and then I got this piece sort of bent up that fits in here pretty well now. And I did do a little bit test on him to make sure that this goes back up and it's fine. Uh, what I will do is once I get this aged up and it's patched up, this is going to be like sort of like an extra wrinkle here. I'm going to sculpt uh, over because there's no choice in the matter I have to do it. Um, and then also what's going to happen is this key is probably not going to be lined up correctly. But it'll give me a good starting point where I can actually sand it and tweak it a little bit more and go from there. Um, I'm not really so much worried about this key being perfect. It's more about holding this up with some more meat with this thing. Now, of course, uh, when they did this, uh, you know, casting up from the factory, they should have put some kind of a rod bent up around here to go down here. Because this, there's no way that this was going to hold this up over time. As you can see, this stuff is breaking. So, for right now, we're going to work on this one. We're going to get this one secured. Then hopefully we can start getting this lined up in the statue. And then we can work on this key. I'd rather get this one secured a little bit first. Before I try to mess with both of them. And then we can go from there. Because this one goes in no problem as of right now. Even though it's glued. But I'd rather uh, just get at least one of them uh, situated. So I got my glue. I got an Insta set. We're going to glue this piece on. But I want to have some A's mixed up. And I'm going to squeeze it in. It might squeeze in a little bit over there. I'll have to turn this over and fix that little hole and then go from there. So it's just a matter of trying to get this really good secured area set up. Uh, like I said, I'm going to have to probably build up a lot of Aves over here and just make sure it goes on the shoulder no problem because I don't think it really hits the shoulder at all. So I'm going to have to create a wrinkle and give it more meat. It's just uh, you do what you got to do. I might need to drum out this little piece over here because it kind of hits and I don't want to keep going down too far because I might drummel through the cave. So a little bit more tweaking and then I can attach it all. Okay, 
Okay, so at this point, I said screw it, we're customizing the piece. I have no choice but to do it. It's going to be a little bit of tiny custom work, nothing you would really even notice. But I figured out what the problem was. So anyway, uh, the key that was in there, what happened was the person, what they did is they put a metal rod in there and they, and they glued it. And sadly, that wasn't correctly done. Uh, and so I just broke it off and I dremeled it down. So we're basically, I'm putting the original key back in there. I got this metal rod, which I bent and it took a while to grind and chop and bend and warp. So I did a lot of hammering. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple drops of glue in there. And we're going to put the metal rod in like that for now. Um, we're just going to let it sit uh, when I put the cape on it, though, because i got to make sure I line it up. And then what's going to happen is I did some custom work on the cape. And you can see I chopped up this key and I chopped up all this over in here. Uh, it, it just it was a shit show because I, fi I figured out what the problem was. So basically what I'll do is after that key is sort of glued in, I'll put some, uh, you know, A's in here. We'll put a little bit of A's in here. And then what I'll do is I'll get some tape and I'll tape this on and let this sit over the day. Like that. And then what will happen is that A's will lock that piece into place and then afterwards I can pop out the key and everything and I could do more A's work and kind of go in and out of the piece and clean it up and we'll have a nice system holding this cape on. Now the problem what I figured out was it wasn't the keys issue. It's actually this piece here and this piece here is actually either warped in casting, it shrunk, or when they pulled it out of the mold, maybe it wasn't as cured as they thought and it sort of squeezed together. So all of this is kind of warped, it's not correct. None of this is lining up correctly to all the muscles and all that stuff. So at that point, I'm not rebuilding this whole thing. It's not gonna happen. I'm just gonna do the best I can with this key and that is it. Uh, I'm not sitting here and rebuilding a whole entire cave just for this uh, thing unless the client asks for it, but then I gotta do a whole lot more planning. Uh, so that's the deal with this. So all I'm going to do is we're going to, I'm going to do this off camera because I can't really sit there and show you guys. I got to really focus on this. A couple drops of glue, a little bit of Aves, let it sit. And then hopefully by the time we come back tomorrow, I can actually lift this up out of there and hopefully it lifts up and then we can do a little bit more Aves work and kind of clean it, kind of do some squishing with some baby powder. And then hopefully after that's done, I can do a lot of Aves work here, kind of give it like another uh, sort of loop and stuff. And then that will be a done deal. Uh, so yeah, so I just got to, you know, I'll have to clean up all this. It, it's just getting dusty and it's getting dirty. Uh, it's just the way it is. Uh, you know what it is? I'm getting a little frustrated with it because I was hoping that I didn't have to go this route. But sadly, I have to go this route. Otherwise, it'll never be secured at this point because it's just a poor design. So uh, what I'm going to do is get that done and we'll come back tomorrow and see how it is. Alright, so it's been a few days and uh, I had a chance now to get back onto this and work on it. So what I did is, it's messy at the moment, but at this point it doesn't really matter. It's just some baby powder. I filled up this area with Aves. I kind of like uh, did a little bit extra of a loop. Uh, I put some Aves in there so it kind of grabs in there and fills in that area. So basically after I did that, and it's kind of hard to do it at this angle, but... If we get this in here like so, and we put this down, it's kind of flush now. So I'll sh what I'm going to have to do is let this cure up for the day, come back tomorrow, sort of sand all this down. And then once this is all sanded down, we're pretty much at the point where this is uh, just needs to be cleaned up and then uh, painted. But I still got to figure out the part back here, this uh, piece back here. So what I'm thinking is, I think it is this one. Yeah, so this one over here has this little rod that was supposed to connect to this. So what I talked to the client was, I'm thinking instead of having this little rod here, maybe I could get some kind of a metal rod that looks like it's supposed to be in here and sort of dremel it in here and like bend this over. So when the cape lays down, it lays down on that rod to give it a little bit of support, but it doesn't go into the rod. Just think of like one of these little like uh, metal rods kind of like bending out here, like bending over. So the cape kind of lays on it just to hold it for some support. I'd rather have the cape go downwards onto the rod than try to click this into the cape. It doesn't make sense to kind of click it into it. I'd rather have something supported. So that'll be the next step once this is done. But I gotta, you know, 
We're, we're gonna actually, I talked to the client, we're gonna spruce up the cape a little bit. So I think once I touch up the paint, what I'll do is I'll mask off some of this stuff and maybe we'll add a little interference or something to it. Uh, maybe a little extra of pearlized purple. Give it a little bit of a silky look just to kind of make it pop a little bit more. Um, and then over in this with this stuff here, we gotta kind of repaint this a little bit because uh, he drilled through this by accident. I have a little A's over here. So we're gonna have to kind of clean it up, but I think um, we're pretty much there. I think we're pretty much at the point where this is going to be secured. It's not gonna go anywhere. And uh, then we have a nice, decent, solid repair on this cape. So we'll come back after I kind of clean this up. I'll kind of wash all this down and everything. We'll touch up some of these areas. And then we're gonna start working on this piece to hold up the cape. And then uh, we can just do the paint work and it'll be done. All right guys, so we're all finished up. Uh, it took me a little bit longer than expected to get pearlized purple. Uh, I went to three different art stores driving out each week and it turns out that they never had it in stock. So I went and ordered it online and it was delayed because they didn't have any in stock at the art store. So finally it came in and I painted this up this morning. After I painted that up, what I did is I used AK Interactive uh, Metal and I used a paintbrush and I painted the little metal pieces around there. If you're good enough with the paintbrush and the AK Interactive stuff, it goes on really smooth. But if you sit there and you keep doing brush strokes while it's drying, you'll create the brush strokes. So you got to kind of just do a, a quick little circle, let it dry, and then you're pretty much good to go. Then after lunch, once that was all set up, what I did is I hit it with AK Interactive a clear coat to give it a nice protecting and give it a little bit of a gloss, and we're pretty much ready to go. So now that we have two huge metal rods in here, one there, and then we have this metal rod over here holding the cape so it doesn't go in this direction. Uh, basically, it's a little bit more uh, durable in the long run. Uh, but like I said, if you are producing a statue, you're becoming the art director slash like engineer as well. Because you can't really leave it up to the uh, sculptor unless the sculptor is willing to work with you. Uh, something like this, what I would have done is I would have had this piece connected to this piece. And this would have connected into the body. It would have been a lot more durable to hold this cape up. And then you could, you could swap the heads in and out over here. Instead of having this little bar thing going around there, it's like you're, you only have this little much of resin holding up all this weight. It doesn't make any sense to me. So you need to think about stuff like that if you're going to make a statue. Whether it's just making one for yourself or if you're planning on like selling like 50 copies or so to people. Um, you really want to make it durable. Like, I would have made sure that these hands are removable with magnets because it would have just been better because trying to handle this body with these fingers like that, you're just asking for trouble. Uh, the other thing, too, is hopefully down the line this uh, doesn't warp on people because if they didn't put a rod going all the way up this leg up to here, this could actually start warping over time. So, you know, I don't know if it is or not, but this is stuff you need to think about. And, you know, a lot of the... Uh, Main factories like Sideshow, Tweeterhead, uh, Bowen, and all that stuff, they learn over time where they kind of know that they got to start, you know, engineering their items if they want to have it floating and stuff like this so they don't warp. You know, I'm not saying that they were perfect, they made mistakes too, but, you know, if you're going this route and you're selling an item and this thing is like, you know, a couple grand or so, uh, you really want to make sure that it lasts long for uh, the people who are purchasing it. So just keep that in mind if you guys are ever producing stuff because whenever I do my customs, I always try to go above and beyond making sure the metal rods are going up the legs so nothing warps. Uh, I try to make sure that things are removable and as best as I can with magnets uh, because, you know, we're all collectors. Sometimes we move, we got to pack everything up. Sometimes we want to sell off our collection and get other things. So shipping it to other people and then them putting it together, you know, problems happen and occur. So that's kind of just a little bit of advice. Uh, but other than that, I'm glad this worked out. A um, good thing too, it's local too, so I don't have to worry about shipping this. They could come down and pick it up now and it's all said and done. And it's the best I came up with. So let me know what you guys think. Do you like the way I did it? Do you not like the way I did it? Uh, do you like the idea of just uh, giving you guys a little bit info on you know producing and designing and engineering? Just to kind of think of that if you're doing anything on that on your end. But with that being said, thanks for watching guys and we'll be back with some more videos.